11 chemistry students today what we're learning to do is predict the nature of bonds okay we actually already did this last lesson but we're going to add to it a little bit we are going to be able to predict the nature of compounds are they ionic polar covalent or non-polar covalent so what i'd like you to do to start is to draw the following lewis structures of the compounds in blue nh3 bbr3 nacl and br2 Draw dipoles and partial charges where appropriate. Please pause the video and do that now. So, so far what I did is I drew the Lewis structures for each covalent compound with lines and each ionic compound with just ions. Now, it says to draw the dipoles and partial charges where necessary. In order to do that, we have to look at our electronegativity chart and figure out what kind of bonds there are. So let's figure out the electronegativities now. I'll list them below. So what we do is we subtract the higher electronegativity from the lower electronegativity. And these are the values and difference of ENs that I get for each one of my compounds here. Now, if you look at the, the chart that's on your periodic table, you'll find out that this is a polar compound. Or polar, this has polar bonds, excuse me. This also has polar bonds. The NaCl has ionic bonds. And this Br2 here, it's electronegativity difference of zero. That has non-polar bonds. Okay, so we are going to draw all the dipoles for all the ones that have polar bonds. They go towards, they point towards the more electronegative atom. I'll do that now. So if you look, I've added all my partial negative, partial positive charges, pointed my dipoles to the more electronegative atom. Let's take a look. You should know how to do this. Now let's point out this one with BBr3, specifically when you're making, I didn't mention this earlier, but this breaks the octet rule. Boron is the only compound, uh, boron atoms are the only atoms that can break the, the octet rule. They're actually happy with six. It's just a, something that you have to memorize. Uh, boron can ha be happy with six, and it's stable. That's the only one that can really happen. Everybody else in our examples actually followed the octet rule. So the question that we have is, is yeah, we can determine uh, if the bonds are polar or not, uh, if they're ionic. But the question is, is are the molecules themselves, and I actually shouldn't use the term molecules. We should use really use the term compounds. Are the compounds polar, nonpolar, or ionic? Okay, so that's the question that we want to ask. Now, uh, to do that, we have to go over a few ground rules to determine if you're polar or not. So we just learned that we can have bonds that are polar, nonpolar, or ionic. Now, how do we determine if the compound itself is polar, nonpolar, or ionic? Well, first of all, Let's take a look at it. If you have ionic bonds, that is automatically going to mean that you're an ionic compound. There's no other way that you can do it. If you have nonpolar bonds, you are also going to be a nonpolar molecule. You can't be a polar molecule. Okay. Now, if you're polar, you, polar bonds, you're also going to be a polar molecule. And if you are a if you have polar bonds, you also can be a nonpolar molecule. So this is the only one that's confusing. As soon as you have polar bonds, you can either be a polar molecule or a nonpolar molecule. And the way that we determine it is, is if the dipoles cancel. Okay, so if the dipoles cancel, then you are nonpolar. If the dipoles do not cancel, then you are polar. Okay, so let's look at some examples where we are polar. Polar bonds, but the dipoles cancel where we're nonpolar. And let's look at some examples where they do not cancel. So let's actually go back to our original examples. We have two examples here where we have polar bonds. We have NH3 and we have BBr3. So when we look at NH3, we can tell that this dipole cancels out with this dipole. So therefore, there is no one canceling out with this dipole. This is what we call a polar molecule, okay? Because the dipoles do not all cancel out, it is polar. It would dissolve in water. Now let's take a look at this compound, BBr3. 
Now this is strange. Again, if you're in the middle here and you have basically uh, dipoles going off at 180 degrees, if you look at that, it kind of looks like a Mercedes symbol, they actually cancel out. So that's an example of a nonpolar molecule right here. This is a nonpolar molecule because the dipoles cancel out. So let's see if we can figure out some more examples. Okay, I have a set of two groups of molecules. I have polar molecules on the left side and nonpolar molecules on the right side. And the first thing that we got to determine is if it's polar, okay, it has to have dipoles that do not cancel. So let's go ahead and look at each one of these molecules and determine which ones need dipoles. We have to calculate the difference in electronegativity. Let's do that now. So as you can tell, what happened was is that we canceled out, uh, sorry, we, we included all the dipoles for the ones that required polar bonds. Now, I didn't actually give you a value, but you can see that I calculated that it was polar or nonpolar. Now this one here, it actually does not need any dipoles because it had nonpolar bonds. So that's why that is a nonpolar molecule. Similarly, if it had ionic bonds, it would be an ionic molecule. Now let's look at this one down here. As you can see, each one of these dipoles is going in opposite directions. And so therefore, this is a nonpolar molecule because the dipoles cancel. So the dipoles are canceling out in this one, and that makes it nonpolar. Here the dipoles in water do not cancel, and in HCl do not cancel, so therefore it's a polar molecule. So let's say we take Cl and we remove it. So we completely remove Cl, and we replace that Cl with a Br, a bromine. Now if you look at that, I now have two types of bonds in my molecule. I have my three bonds, which are between C and Cl. One two, three, and I have my new bond between C and Br. Now that is, or sorry, actually I meant to change that to an H. Let me change that to an H. You can see it's an H there. Now that actually is a nonpolar bond, does not require a dipole. So if we take this compound now, it is no longer a nonpolar molecule. Once we replace that H there, it's actually a polar molecule because this dipole is canceling out, the top and bottom dipoles cancel out, but the left dipole is not canceling out with any right dipole. So therefore, that molecule there is considered polar. So in summary, this is the pretty much how it works. If you're nonpolar bonds, you are a nonpolar molecule. If you have ionic bonds, you're ionic. If you're polar and the dipoles do cancel out, you are sorry, dipoles do cancel, you're nonpolar. If they do not cancel, you are a polar covalent compound. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and ask me if you have any questions tomorrow in class. Enjoy your evening.